All right, so we're going to talk about why the finishing matters so much on these concrete floors because sometimes the homeowners aren't quite sure what they're going to do with the finished flooring. And, you know, if that's the case, they may just leave the concrete to finish flooring, which at the end of the video, you'll see why that was so critical. Um, this is going to be a house, and right next to it on the right, you can't see it in the video, but there's a wedding barn. So people that book weddings here at this wedding barn, they'll stay in this house, you know, during the wedding process, usually just for the weekend. Now, <clears throat> we were hired to pour the slab. The homeowner set up all the forms. He's actually a builder, and he'll end up building this house, which you'll see at the end of the video. This thing turned out absolutely beautiful. But we ended up coming in pouring it, and this is that. I'll, that's on another video. I'll link that at the end if you want to see us pouring this and how we did it. That was a little bit of challenging too. But for those of you that watch a lot of my videos, you you know you don't get to see much of us finishing them. So this one's going to show you the process where we actually finish the concrete from start to finish, and you know why it's really important to pay attention to details when you're finishing concrete because like I said they don't know what they're going to do for flooring they want to do something that's going to be easy to maintain easy to keep clean something simple you know there's going to be other people in here and if it's a wedding you know chances are before the wedding people are they're eating a lot of food they're probably drinking a lot they're probably going to spill stuff on the floor quite a bit so as far as the owners go when they come in to clean this thing before the next wedding what's going to be the the easiest thing for them to be able to maintain that's still going to look really nice and you know it's going to last a long time so we'll show you we actually were hired to come in and do the finish too, the sealing on it the coating whatever you want to call it to, but to make the concrete look finished and that's I'll give you just a glimpse of that at the end of the video how that turned out and then you know if you like share and subscribe you'll be able to come back and see the actual finishing we did and how we did it and you know maybe that's something you might want to think about if you're doing concrete what you want for a finish on your floor if you like the way it looked I thought it came out really really nice right now Darren's got the power trial and you know usually on a slab this size this is a couple thousand square feet one of us can keep up with the power trial and pretty easy and then usually I'll leave just Darren and Luke here and you know one guy will go around and do the edges while the other guy power trials Today I wanted to make sure I got this all on video so I actually stayed and helped the guys today too. And part of the paying attention to detail is, you know, doing the edges like I'm doing right here. Is getting the edges nice and smooth, making sure everything's filled in really nice. Um, you know, may, you know, knowing how to hold the hand trowel so your edges, the, the troweled part under the trowel gets smooth. And also knowing that it's a process, like it's not done in just one pass. There's multiple passes around this thing. We probably, we probably went around this four to five times before the slab was actually finished by hand on these edges. And then it's the same with the power troweling, you know, you hit it like Darren's doing right here. This is the first time he's hitting it. This was probably an hour to two hours after we got done pouring. And then depending on how fast this thing's drying, how warm out it is, how much the sun is curing it up, you know, he may have to shut the power trial off for a little bit, let the slab cure up a little bit more before he hits it again with the power trial. But it's all just a process of getting it from start to finish. And, you know, as Darren's running that power trial over it, he's basically what he's doing is he's, he's smoothing out the surface a little bit with the trial blades, taking out the bow float lines, filling in any little holes or imperfections here he is on the second pass now you can see I don't know if you can see it but <clears throat> if you guys finish concrete you can it's it's now getting a lot smoother on this second pass than it was on the first pass and that's because he let it sit for about 30 minutes in between hits before we started trialing again and the part to your right here that I mean that's been in the Sun basically the whole time whereas the part where he's hitting right now has been in the shade for quite a while so that's going to be curing up a lot slower and the part that started out in the sun will finish up quicker so it's going to kind of finish from right to left as, as he's power trialing this thing. We also use a pattern when we finish. You can kind of see the trial marks are going north to south here on the video. 
And the first time he hit it, they went east to west, so he kind of crosses his pattern every time he hits it, and that helps flatten the slab too. So now he didn't really shut the trowel off this time. He just went right back up to where that sun was hitting it. And you can start to see a, a shine or sheen on the surface. And it's turning like a little bit darker color. So that's what we call starting to shine out. That section now is done. So he doesn't have to go back up there and hit that again. So that part only took three hits before it was done. And it's getting really, really smooth. It's about you know, what we call as smooth as glass up there right now. And because we weren't sure if you know, if the owner was going to do like hardwood or some other tile or something over this, or maybe he just wanted to leave it concrete, we're making sure that the finish looks really, really nice. And, you know, we're not leaving any, any trial marks behind or any little holes from, from aggregate that might be moving around on the surface, little pinholes or rock holes. Darren's making sure that everything's getting filled in really, really good. You can see this section he's hitting right now, it still has a little bit of grayness to it, a little bit of fuzz to it. So that, you know, that means he's gonna have to let that sit for a few minutes, come back, hit it again, and then it'll start to, to shine out like that part up there on the upper right side. And the part in the shade's definitely gonna need to be hit again. We're also kind of battling those leaves today. It was, it's, it was in the fall, the leaves were falling. And you can see we were, in, you know, in different parts of the video, you'll see us with a leaf blower, you know, cleaning the leaves off the slab so we didn't have to run them over with the power trial. Sometimes the power trial will move them on its own, sometimes it won't. And you don't, you don't really want to trowel them in the surface because then it'll end up showing. But once you get the edges down and smooth, I mean, he's going to put a 2x6 plate around the edges, so five and a half inches of that edge won't even show it's just you just get that part looking pretty nice so we can set the the sill plate on it and then from five and a half inches out and in, in beyond into the slab that's the part you want to be really really fussy on and we're usually really fussy around all those pipes and stuff too even though you know some of them are going to be covered by probably in a bathroom you might have some type of flooring or either that or they come up in a wall we're still really fussy. We like to make it really flat around those those pipes, so we trowel them every single time we hit it with a power trowel. You can see it's a, it was just a nonstop battle with the leaves. The wind's blowing pretty good today, but overall, you know, with having an extra guy here, kind of helping moving around, picking them up, it wasn't too bad. So most of this is getting finished up now. Darren's finishing up that last little piece. You can see how the shade really affects the finish. That part way up in there in the right top corner is, was done for quite a while now, probably over an hour. And this part here is just the shade kept moving in on it and in on it. Really slows down the finishing process. The line you see there on the, the chalk line you see is gonna be for a saw cut. You're gonna see real quick just how we saw cut these slabs. We, we saw cut every slab we do and this one the homeowner set up he did a really good job of setting this up it was 3500 psi it had fiber mesh in it he did have wire mesh down as, you, as you'd see in the pour but he, they tied radiant heat tubes to it and that was just to keep the radiant heat tubes really close and straight and then we put a double roll rebar around the outside edges when we poured so this is going to be a really rugged slab it ended up being about eight inches thick total throughout the whole thing one of the ways we get the power trial off the slabs off our floors into the truck is with that little crane we have mounted to our trucks we buy the crane the way it is it comes with the you know the arm the and it comes with a little boat crank on it we take that off and we just mount a winch to it like a a $65 two ton or four ton winch and then power it up from the battery of the truck and then that makes you know moving the trial around really easy Darren's kind of scraping it clean right now while me and Luca laying out the rest of the saw cuts we try to saw cut off any of those interior corners like that that's generally where the slabs gonna to want to crack first and then depending on how thick the slab is 
that kind of dictates to you how close together your joints want to be. A lot of our jobs are engineered with plans and the engineer has the joints all drawn out for us. They may or may not be right, but we still have to follow them if they're engineered. And then for some of these slabs like this, you know, we'll just, we'll just mark them out where we think it's more likely, the slab is more likely to crack. And then we, that's why we cut the joint there. So it's the slab cracks right in the joint and then you can't even tell. So we get, we usually saw too, right after we pull the power trial off like this, you know, if the slab is, is what we call shined out, the surface is really hard and dense. So we get really nice clean saw cuts this way. I'm using the little electric one over there on the right. And Luke's, you know, using the, the typical, what we call Husqvarna soft cut saw, green cutting saw, goes down about a, you know, inch and a half. When you cut green like this, it's it's a lot more likely the slab's going to crack in the saw cut than outside of it versus if you come back early the next morning, you know, a lot of times the slabs will have already cracked by then. So we we, we saw 99% of our floors and slabs the same day. The only reason we don't maybe is if it's in the middle of the winter, it just doesn't cure up enough. Darren and Luke, they really like that saw. It, it cuts fast, and they're really accurate. They're good at it, eyeballing it on the joint. So they, they cut a slab like this in just minutes. Plus, there's no cord being gassed. There's no cord. What's really going to be cool is when they come out with a battery one, and you don't have to worry about the gas. You know, you just pull it out of the truck. It's ready to go. And then we're gonna sweep off, you know, we sweep off most of the dust like this on every job we do. And then on this one, we're gonna just take it a little bit further and we'll end up, you know, Luke's gonna leaf blow what any little bit of dust is left. And then we'll just let the slab cure up the way it is like this. You know, we're not gonna spray on any curing compound or anything like that because Again, the homeowner doesn't know what he wants for a finished slab, and if he wants to leave the concrete surface as the finished slab, you don't want that sprayed on curing compound on there because then you're gonna have to grind it all off to put some type of really nice finish on. So that's the other, kind of the other half of the day, you know, a lot of the videos I do are about us pouring concrete. And then this is what happens after the pour. All right, so here's the house all built. There's the wedding barn over there to the right. You know, that the guy does a really good job building, like I said. And then, so he hired us to come in and do the finishing on the concrete. You know, it was, we, he kept it pretty clean, but we had to come in and clean it and then rub on the finish, or wipe on the finish. You'll get to see that in the finishing video. So make sure you like and share and subscribe to come on back and just see how we got it to look like this. But that's going to end up being the finished floor. So it looks like, you know, a really nice, easy to maintain finished floor.